Okay, for our last video for today, I've rough cut and placed all these components and I've separated them into a head folder and a body folder because it allows me to see what um, little alterations I might want to do to help them match. And I'm thinking what I want to do is make the shoulders bigger in proportion. So I find that reference, which is here. And I'm going to Option Command T and use Distort and just widen those shoulders. Especially at the back there. Make those a little bit bigger. Okay, now I can go to the this transition element that's in front of it, and I can start <coughs> blending organic texture into organic texture by using my soft edged eraser. Yep. Yeah, and we're gonna, before I do a lot of that, like this kind of thing, you'll notice that already this polar bear reference and this, this mouse tummy aren't really matching. Though they are blending in terms of pixels, they don't match in terms of color, even though they're both white fur. That's because of lots of different factors in those photo references. So how can I correct for that? Well, before I start blending, I need to do those direct adjustments. So I'm going to start with the head because that's the focal point. So save your work at this point. Then I'm going to isolate the head. And just so you're not at all, this is like um, sanding and polishing the engine. I'm going to work from the background on forward, just like we did for our landscape. So these are my, my furthest back two layers, the cranium and the ears. And before I start erasing from the cranium with my soft edged 100% opaque, notice how well that's already starting to work. I want to match those colors a little bit better. So I'm going to take, I like the pink of the ears, but I want to play with the colors and lighting on the cranium. So I go to adjustments, and the first one I do is levels, exactly like we did for our landscape. And I play with the midtones, and I see if I want to make it lighter. Push it off to the edge here, or darker. And I think, if anything, I want to make it a little bit lighter, right? And I can limit the highlights just a little bit. There we go. Next, I can play with color balance, because animals are photographed sometimes outside. If there are things like a mouse, sometimes inside, and there's going to be different qualities and temperatures of light. So I'm going to go to the mid-tone sliders, and it's going to kind of push them back and forth. And it looks like I need a little bit of magenta to my mid-tones, a little bit of red to my mid-tones. Notice it doesn't change the, the color of the fur. It just makes it feel like it's believable with those pink ears. Just little slides. Shadows, I'll usually go a little towards the cools so it doesn't flatten out. And then highlights, I'll go a little bit towards the warms. So these are really subtle shifts you can play with. And that's because I want the gray fur and the pink ears. Now, what if I really wanted to change the fur and make it a different color? Well, I'm going to do that with hue saturation, the tool, the protractor that we don't always use. So I've done levels, I've done color balance. Now it's time for image hue saturation. And if I really want to change the color, I use this hue slider. And I find the spectrum color that I want it to be. So I can make it purple fur, yellow fur, green fur, blue fur. And that's the extent of what this can do because it has those grays and those blacks and those whites in it, they all have to be present. 
if I click on colorize in hue saturation, it will do what's called make it monochrome. And that can be tempting, but the problem is I lose all the pixel diversity of color because now everything is just different value variations of one hue. And that won't look as believable. But sometimes what I'll do is this. I'll make a duplicate of it. And on the duplicate that's sitting on top, I'll go to image adjustment, hue saturation, colorize. Let's say I want it to be pink fur. And I'll make it kind of pink and I'll brighten it up. And I'll intensify its saturation or, or put it where I want it. And then I will take the opacity and layer that into the layer underneath and then erase away where the colors differ. Right, so the snout has more yellow and blue in it. But if I want that fur to have more pink, colorize helps me get there. And that's another form of internal compositing. Okay, once you've erased hard edges at 100% opacity, then you can go to lower opacities with your hard edged eraser and start transitioning. And once you're happy with the blending of those layers, yeah, I don't think I need it. Then you can move on to the next one. So now I've got the, the nose, the nostrils, and I want to go to image adjustment levels, either brighten it or darken it. Looks like I need to brighten it a little bit, limit the highlights. Just a tiny bit. And then image adjustment, color balance. I'm going to start with the mid-tones. And I'm going to push this a little bit more towards the reds, magentas, and the yellows, so it, it's as noticeable as those ears. So then in the highlights, I'm going to go really warm with the yellow and the red. Let me counter it a little bit. And then in the shadows, I'm going to go back towards the cyan and the blue. Okay. Next, hue saturation. If I just want to shift the overall spectrum a little bit, yeah, I'm going to push it a little bit to the left. And then saturation, how much intensity? I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit. So it is more of a focal point. And now I can start blending this. So I'm going to use my soft edged eraser, 100% opacity, 0% hardness on the brush settings, and then the size a little bit smaller because this is a little bit narrower space. And the first thing I do is I get rid of that hard edge. Ah, oh, but you see this is tricky because I want that nostril and the ghosting is making that hard. So this is where I'm going to use a tablet and I'm going to set my brush for my eraser to be pressure sensitive with this button so that then I can press lightly and get a smaller space. And then go quite small with the distinction. Now here this is something I might try to use the magic wand with. If you remember it from landscape, I can hold down shift, but it might erase too much. And then I can use that magic wand as a stencil to cut and erase away from. So now I have a nice sharp nostril there flowing into the eyes. I can do the same thing here with the magic wand. Try to grab a lot of this and then just use it as a stencil for my eraser. So I'm not erasing anything I don't want to erase.
But if I hit delete, I would lose all this stuff that I do want to keep. So that's all at 100% opacity. Now when I want to transition it, once I've gotten rid of these hard edges, which I have because of my soft edged brush, now I can go to lower opacities than 100%. And blend it in. I'm doing this at about 63% opacity. Then I can go to only about 20. And blend this snout in with the fur from the raccoon and the whiskers on this side. All right, so now maybe I want to, with that lower opacity, blend in the whites of this nose a little bit. Transition that. That looks a little bit better. Kind of going down from the tear ducts. Nope, don't want that. Okay, so save your progress. And that's a perfectly fine fantasy creature face, but it's missing the eyes that I wanted, right? So now I'm going to play with these eyes. Same thing, image adjustment, levels first. Play with the midtone sliders. The eyes are in shadow, so I really need to brighten them up so that they show. and maybe even darken the darks a little bit. Now, color balance is going to make a big difference with those eyes. So image adjustments, color balance. I just did levels. I'm going to start with the, the mid-tones, and I need to take some of that yellow away. Even though it's really pretty to have these different color temperatures of fur, I need them to transition into each other a little bit more believably. So then I'm going to go to shadows, the blues back in there, and then to the highlights. Get the, yeah, limit the warms a little bit. All right. So we can see how much color balance helps it to feel more like it's part of the same creature, even though the lighting is pretty different. And now I can do hue saturation because maybe I want to make those eyes more intense. And I go right to saturation and up it. I can play with the, the hue slider. And now 100% soft edged eraser. Get rid of those hard edges. That's why we have so much overlap. This does a lot of the blending for you. You have to get rid of those hard edges first. No excuse for those hard edges. Once you've gotten rid of those, then you can take your opacity down on your eraser and start blending the organic textures together. like the fur. I can get a little bit of that rust colored fur in and around the eyes, blending with the raccoon's gray fur. But I don't want to erase things like the eyes that are really, really structural. 